All right, folks, what we have here is a 2014 BMW 328i, which is the all wheel drive one. What we're doing here is the rear brakes, rear brakes and rotors. All right, I'm going to do this side to side with the brake wear sensor. All right, brake wear sensor basically is goes right inside the little hole here for the brake pad. When the brake uh, lining starts to wear out, okay, it'll cut into that sensor. It'll short it, ground it, or whatever it does to it, and it'll send you a light on a dash saying that you need brakes. All right. So to start this job, if you notice when you pull the wheel off, look at all this aluminum crud from the wheel that gets all over here. Okay, all this stuff here, you got to be, you got to get a screwdriver or a little chisel or something and just chop it all off so otherwise this road is not coming off okay this is from your wheel if you have a hard time getting your wheel off it's because of this okay because this is like a steel and then the wheel is aluminum and the two metals they just don't they don't they kind of clash okay so what happens is that the aluminum gives up and all that stuff goes right in here so what you want to do is you want to chop it up so you see like a little crack there don't breathe it in I don't know what's in it. It's pottery like cocaine. But yeah, gotta chop this all up. All the way around. So we do that first, so no one drag you out. So you're not bored watching this. All right, now that we got that all chopped up out of the way, nice and clean. What you want to do is you want to shoot a little WD-40 or PB Blast is what I use. You don't have to get too uh, crazy with it because it will seek its way into the groove. See this little uh, Allen screw here that holds the rotor on? You want to spray that too. Let that soak while you work on the caliper. Okay, now on the caliper back here, there's two Allen head screws eight millimeters, all right? Take the eight millimeters out. This thing should slide right out. It'll come with the wire, because like I said, the sensor is attached to the pad. See right there? You can see like two little tiny clips in there. That's what holds it in, right? So you're not worried about the old one because it has to be changed. You can't, most of the time, 95% of the time, this will not come out in one piece. You have to unfortunately spend the extra 30 box or whatever it is to change it okay so no matter what you do sometimes it just doesn't work out that way okay but if you look closely at it you can see the little tiny sensor right there it's that little tiny tab so if it shows you here that little tiny tab right there okay when the brake pad wears and starts to wear that out it'll cut a little hole into it and it'll set off the alarm all right now back over here the caliper itself to take this brake pad off these brake pads just pretty much just sit on there like that, okay? We're changing the brakes because the other side was bad. Okay, so I'm just doing this side for you. Now in the back here, what I say it was a 16 millimeter, 16 millimeter. There's two bolts back here, one here and one here. Once you take that off, then the bracket will come off. Or it'll fall off depending how you do it. All right. Right, put the bolts on this side. There's a little bracket. You're gonna wire brush this all up nice and clean. Okay. So I brush this all nice and clean so it looks nice. Okay, now we're gonna get to that screw. Now there's a trick to that screw. It's a six millimeter Allen. Okay, when well, you put it in there, it's a little rusty, so you might have to just tap it in there, get it in there. And you notice that when you go to Loosen it up, the rotor's gonna turn. Okay? So, I'm gonna give you a little trick here. Okay? What I'm gonna do is, let me set you up on this tripod here, and we'll go from there. All right, so here's the trick of the trade. Put your little six millimeter Allen in there. I'm gonna take two of your lug bolts. Can't say them log nuts, because they're not nuts. Throw them in there two, three turns, right? Take a little bar. Some people have a 
a big screwdriver. And what you can do is you're going to anchor it just like that. Okay. Now, what, what happens is that when you turn it now, the rotor, you're going to notice that the bar is going to get jammed. All right. It's going to get jammed. It's going to get jammed onto the floor. Okay. I'll show it to you over here. Okay. It's going to get jammed on the floor. And that's going to hold it for you. It's like having somebody hold the rotor for you. You can do push in and turn and it will come out sometimes it's a little rough sometimes it's gonna come out easy there you go all right put that off to the side take your breaker bar back off take your screws back on all right now we're down to the rotor the rotor i'm gonna take a nice little sledge and you're gonna whack it. Remember, we don't need the rotor no more because we're changing it. So you're gonna whack it and it should pop right out because we put enough WD-40 and PB blaster in there. There you go. What do you think, huh? There you go. See the rust starting to come up on the rotor? All right. This side looks a little better, but the rust is still coming up. That's why we change rotors. What I like to do here is I look at the brake, emergency brake shoes. They look fine. The hardware looks fine. Take your AutoZone brake cleaner. Spray it all around. Waste a good half a can on it. Get all the dust off of it. This is the time that you want to look at your your dust shield back here. Make sure it's not rotted because over time they rot and then they end up hitting the rotor when you spin it. So after you put the new rotor on, you got to make sure that you can spin it and you don't hear any funny noises because there should be no funny noises, no grinding noises. You have to look a little bit of a noise only because the emergency brake will be touching it sometimes. Other than that, it should be good. Okay. See that? It's all nice and clean. All right. Let's see the products that we're going to use. We're going to go with AutoZone. AutoZone brake rotors. That's what I'm using right there. 73048DL. These are the gold brake pads, DG1613. And this is the brake wear sensor, 690078 or... In the catalog, it says WK933. Okay, this is the sensor. It plugs in. You guys wire it all the way around and find the plug. It's pretty simple. I'll show you that when we get to that. All right, there's the sensor itself. The round part that plugs into the, the pad. All right, now, with these brake pads, if you notice when I took the old ones off, uh, BMW has two types of uh, brakes. One, the high performance with the M3s. A different type of pad. These are the ones that look like little wings. The other one is just basically just a, a square pad. All right. So if you have the square pads, then you've got the high performance brakes and the high performance rotors, which is like, I don't know, I think $300 each. All right. These are about $100 each, $110. All right. And um, that's it. Let's go, uh, let's go put it in. All right. We got to clean the rotors. Don't forget. Take the oil off of it. You got to clean, use brake clean and clean the shipping oil that's on the brake rotors. They put it on there so it doesn't rust while it's sitting on the shelf until you decide to do your brakes. Or somebody buys it. All right. So that's what we're going to do now. I'm going to go clean it up and then we'll come back. All right. Here we are with the rotor nice and clean. Try not to touch it with your hands. Sit it right in there. Find that screw that you had. Let's put it back in. Silly. Wrong one. There you go. Poked it in the wrong hole. All right. I'm going to do the same thing. With the two little lug studs. 
except we're now we're going to go the opposite way. So it's going to sit this way. Okay. All right, make sure it's anchored. All right, you guys are with me? Okay, it's anchored that on the floor so it won't slip. Be extra careful. Make it nice and tight. <laughs> All right. I'm going to back it off. Take this off. Well, no, what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave these on for now. Put one on this side. At this time, what you want to do is you want to spin it. You want to make sure that you're not hitting anything over here. And all you hear is just the emergency brakes, just barely touching. Okay, if you hear like a, a metal grind to it, that means you bent this either because you pulled the wheel off and it fell on it. But that's that. All right. So now we're gonna go and we're gonna clean up this little bracket here. Okay. Let's see. Let's find my uh, wire brush and see what we could do here. So the important part is the part right here where you can see the little wear patterns here. Okay, that's where the brake pads glide on. So that's what you want to concentrate on. See that? See the difference between left and right there? Look at that. Shiny, not shiny. While I'm there, I usually do the rest of the bracket. I don't have to get too crazy with it, only because it's going to get messed up anyway as soon as it hits the streets. So the rust and the dust. Oh, yeah. You can wear a mask and hold your breath. Lucky there's a slight wind. That's why everything's going that way. Otherwise, yes. Safety is a concern, people. It's a shame they're not going to make this brake cleaner no more. They got some other brand, shop, something. It's not as good. Not as good. All right, we're going to let this dry a little bit here. Then we're going to mount it back on with the two bolts. All right, and we're going to tighten the specs. All right, so the bracket is on there. Nice and tight. Now I'm going to work on the pad sensor and pushing the piston back. All right, so the sensor should pop right out. Got a little screwdriver in there. Just be able to pry that right out. Just like that. Okay, there's a little rubber cap that goes on the bleeder. Push this off to the side because you're going to replace it anyway. All right, because you never trust it. Because if you put it back together, take it for a ride, and all of a sudden it shows a wheel sensor is no good, then you're in trouble. Then you got to take this all back together again. Back out together. All over again. So, now what we need here is to do is to push that piston in. You could do one or two things. You could push it in with the pad if you want. Or you could just take it on and just push the piston. But you know what? Let's do it with the pad. I haven't done it that way in a while. Let's see here. Go in here. Like this. I'm going to push this in and it should go in nice and smoothly. See? Not left-handed. Left hand goes in nice and smooth. If you're having a hard time, then it's a bad caliber. Like the other side. Okay, I'm just going to hold it in a little bit, a little longer. Release the tool. Take the brake pad off. Ta-da. 
checking for the rust that usually hangs out in that piston. You can also do it if you want. Take a little wire brush. Give it a nice brushing. It's like brushing a pet's tooth, the teeth. Brushy, brushy, brushy. Okay. Check off the little access there. There you go. So now we're at the point where we are going to put a little lube on there. Okay, a little brick silicone lube. Sometimes the pads come with it, sometimes they don't. So it's just gonna go right here. Onto the contact points. Don't have to kill it. Because most of the pads usually have like a little piece of metal there now for lubrication. So what we're gonna do here is this is the brake pad, this is where the sensor goes into. Okay. So since it goes upside down, it's going to go this way. Okay. Now, depending on certain cars, it's a little hard to get in there with the sensor to plug it in afterwards. So what you can do is you can plug it in now. But you know what? I am going to try it right now. Plug it in afterwards. So when I take this, don't want to touch the brake pads, whatever you do. Got to keep it clean. Want no foreign oil or, or, or grease or anything on it. Okay, so I'm going to put this here. Just tilt you down a little bit. Brake pad goes in nice. That should just close right in. Big difference than the other ones where you got to squeeze it between those metal brackets and stuff. All right, so we're going to take this. Spin it around. Make sure that your brake hose is not kinked. Because, you know, sometimes you turn it to the left, turn it to the right, get all screwed up. Make sure these screws are all the way in. Okay, because if they're poking out, then you're going to hit this bracket. And this is going to go right in there. Just like that. Hey, you know what I forgot to tell you guys? When you first took your caliper off. Ugh. There's a little bracket, goes over here, like that. It holds the front of this caliber to this bracket for anti-rattle purposes, I guess, all right? You just stick a little screwdriver in there and pop it out. Sometimes the brake pads will come with new ones. This one doesn't, so I'm gonna put this, that brand back on. So yeah, so that's it. I'm gonna put this on here, push these screws in there. We're gonna tighten up these screws, and then we're gonna move on. And see where that sensor is. But you know what? The wheel wells in the way. So I can't see the sensor. So you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna install the sensor now. That's what I'm doing. Just gonna install the sensor now. It's crazy to do all that work. You see it? Right there. Let me show you. Right there, that little tiny slot right there. Looks like a little U. That's where the sensor goes. So let's see. So I'll get you a little closer here. So sensor only goes in one way. Well, actually, you could probably put it backwards, but you're going to hit in the brake pads. So the little tab right here is going to be facing the rotor. So you're going to take that right there, and you're going to push it straight in. It's turning on me, this thing. All right, should snap right in. Should be really no effort, okay, really, because there's new pads, a new sensor. There's no rust on there. Should snap right in exactly what it did, and just let this wire hang out a little bit while you put the caliber on. All right. So, like I said, should be no effort whatsoever. If you have a problem with it, you're gonna have a problem with it. Okay. Watch out when you're grabbing the caliper. I can feel it already. I happen to get a little grease on my fingers when I grab the caliper. 
All right, so yeah, it's gonna go in here like this. Tighten up the two bolts, and then we're gonna run that wire. Sound good? I'm gonna go clean my hands here. All right, there you go. Put the caliper on, tighten up the eight millimeters, tighten it to specs. I'm gonna put this little bracket on here. These are always not a not easy. This it's, it's a lot of fun putting this stuff on. So pretty much have to anchor it here. Squeeze this in. Oh, look at that. That went pretty easy. Okay. That just supports the front here. Otherwise, it's just two bolts in the back. Otherwise, it'll probably be wobbling. All right. Remember the sensor that we have to do that we tucked away. All right. You have to try to remember how it run or how it how it ran. Okay. There's a little plastic connectors up over here that you have to worry about. Okay. Goes around, and then you probably have to take this screw off over here for the skirt. It looks like where that's where the plug is. So we're going to start from the bottom here exactly the way it was okay the way it was here was it had a little clip here and then it was held on over here with this bleeder screw cap so I'm gonna go backwards okay I'm gonna take this around here I'm gonna go right here to this bleeder screw cap it's usually a little notch here so pretty much not foolproof but dummy proof that you can't really mess that up okay I'm gonna follow along there's another one there okay there's another clip here there's a clip here there's a clip back there there's a white clip down over there there's another white clip over here and then I'm gonna show it over here all right so since my whole body's gonna go in here I'm not gonna be able to film that part of it but basically a little screwdriver right here Okay, and you pry that little clip up and it'll open it up. All right, just make sure that uh, the wire goes in the, the position that it's supposed to be in. All right. All right. Like I said, just remember how it's routed. Goes back this way, around. There's a white clip there. There's another white clip here. You can actually do this with your finger or you get like a little screwdriver if you want. Just pry this little tap up a little bit. Then this piece here will come out. Okay. Dun, 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 like that okay and it's clipped into these little pieces here so you can pop this out of here if you wanted to okay pop it out of a white clip there white clip here this is pretty much all loose already okay now this piece here there is a 10 millimeter nut and there's an 8 millimeter screw here you gotta peel this back peel this back you gotta find a way to hold it. So I'm gonna get a little bungee cord here. I'm gonna tie it back. I made up a fugazi stand over here that can hold it. Otherwise, there's nothing really there that you can hold it. I mean, you can if you have like a open the trunk. Or, but, all right, so there's two clips over here. You pop that open. Okay, look for the wire that you're looking for, which is this one. It actually slides out of there. There's a little clip here that holds the little rubber piece. And then this has a little connector that you squeeze. Looks like it's been there for a while. Oh my God, that dust in it like crazy. Gotta make sure that it can squeeze. All right, so yeah. So once you get the dust that's out of there, you're able to squeeze it, then this little bugger is gonna come right out. Okay? Then you take a new one, wire it the same way, going to go down and around the spring okay like that okay because it went above the uh, the bar here it's like a miniature sway bar goes around the coil to the two clips and then to this piece here to this connector so it only goes in one way so I want to snap it back in you hear it click Perfect. And you'll put that back in here. Okay, got a little provision in there for you. That's in there like that. That is in there like that. So I'm gonna put the little clip on. Like that. What do you think, see? Just like that. 
Then this one over here, see a little rubber piece here? It's going to go, like this one, it's going to go right before it. So I'm going to go in here. I'm going to snap it in here, right before it. I'm going to clip that clip. Do it to the same the one that's all the way back there. And then I'm going to secure it to these two over here. All right. Let's see if I can get there without knocking you guys over. Too late. Knocked you guys over already. All right, so let me do that because I got nobody to hold the camera for me. All right, there you go. Let me take off this tripod here. Clipped on there. Clipped on there. Follow it around. Two black clips over here. Same thing. It's got like a little tab on there. All right. And that's it. It's already connected. So I'm going to take the old one out now. Whichever way you want to pull it out. There you go. That is done. Oh, don't forget your two caps here, people. Little dust caps. This is for the Allen bolt in the back of the caliper. Okay. Believe me, you don't want to get dust in there. Because you'll never be able to dig it out of the Allen screw. All right, that's it. Now I'm going to put this panel back on. A little spaghetti setup I did. <laughs> with the old rotor. Things you have to do. Right. All right. This is going to go back in. 10 millimeter, 8 millimeter. Put your wheels back on and you're good to go, people. This is the right rear with the brake wear sensor. Okay? Sensor's only on the right side. There's none on the left rear. The left rear, off to do the left rear. Okay? Thanks for hanging in with me. Thanks for watching. Ciao. Remember I showed you that crud? That was all over. Here it is. Oxidation from the aluminum wheels. This will make a nice bond on there. So if you got a flat tire, this wheel is not coming off. I'm telling you. It's going to be a hard time. All right. So what you do is you take some nice sandpaper. And sand this all the way. All right. Make it look nice. There you go. All right. Make the surface nice and clean. All right. The best you can do. It is an old car. Now if you think... That a shop is gonna do this for you, forget about it. They're just gonna throw the wheel back on and that's it. Alright? They're not gonna go through this extra effort because you're not paying them. Now, if you want, you can slap a little thin coat of grease all the way around. Okay? There you go. A little thin coat of grease, not gonna hurt you. Some people use never sees. Don't have to get crazy with it, okay? Just enough for a nice little lubrication to put it back on and you're good to go. Alright? That's it. Thanks for watching again.